I greet you today in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. My name is Trisha Beckles, and I welcome you to the Voice of Hope. This program seeks to encourage and remind us that God is always looking out for us, and as a result, we can trust God, we can give God thanks, we can give God praise, and we can indeed see the hand of God at work, even in the midst of our most dire situations. And so, like David did in Psalm chapter 42, verse 11, he says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. So in the midst of life, we can trust God. In the midst of everything that God allows us to face, we can give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. Because once you know that God is with you, once you know that God has got you, once you know that God is looking out for you, you can conquer any situation. You can make it through any trial, any storm, any testing. And so as we journey today, I just encourage you to trust God. Don't be afraid to lift up your situation before God. He already knows. And even as we allow him to walk us through, you will see the goodness of the Lord in this, the land of the living. Shall we pray today? Father and God, I just honor you. I thank you for today. I thank you for life. I thank you for loving us the way you do. I thank you for being our God. Thank you for making our way through your son, Jesus Christ, and reminding us, God, that there is still nothing that is too hard for you to do on our behalf. And so, God, even now as we gather under the umbrella of the Voice of Hope, under the umbrella of the Tobago Inspirational Network, I thank you, God, because you see each and everything that has gone into bringing us here today. And we thank you, God, for your perfect will for our lives. I thank you that you see each and every heart under the sound of my voice, each and every person that has tuned in, each and every situation, God, and we place it all before you. Mighty God, I ask you just to move upon the behalf of your people and allow them to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that there's still nothing that is too hard for you to do, that you see them right where they are and you love them, O oh God. At their worst, you love them. At their best, you'll continue to love them. And Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, your Son, through whom we have access to your throne of grace. So Lord, even now, as we commit this time into your hands, God, I say, have your way. Have your way with every person. Have your way, oh God, even on the atmosphere, Lord, in every single aspect of this presentation. Lord God, the glory belongs only unto you. So we say, let only your will be done and let only your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to remind somebody today that you are significant to God. You may not seem significant to anybody else. You, you know, you may be used to people just ignoring the daylights out of you. It may seem like what concerns you is not a bother to anybody else. Even when you try telling somebody else about it, it may seem like, what are you talking about? Listen, we have bigger things to worry about. Don't even study you and your nonsense. But I'm saying to you today that indeed you are significant to God. And there is still nothing that is too hard for him to do on your behalf. There's no care that you have. There's no worry that you have that is not significant before God. We thank God because he is the same God that numbers the very hairs on your head. If you started to number the hairs on your head, it would take you about two weeks probably. And yet almighty God has taken the time, not just to know how many, not just to count and say you have 5,233,000 hairs on your head, but to actually assign a number to each and every one of them. That is to tell you how significant you are to God. So as we read today, I want to just, you know, just encourage you. It may seem like it's just you and nobody understands, but because you are significant to God, 
There is actually nowhere that you can hide from him. And why would you want to? So my encouragement and my challenge to you today is to draw closer to this God who is so interested in getting to know you, is so interested in whatever concerns you. So I want to turn our attention today to Luke chapter 19. And we're going to read basically verses 1 to 10. It says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Hallelujah. I'll stop there. A lot of us already know about Zacchaeus. A little short man. Jesus is passing along the way. And Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. And so he had to climb up into a, th into a tree. But I'm asking us today to take a, just a closer look and think about Zacchaeus and put yourself in Zacchaeus' shoes and ask yourself in the midst of it, what can I get out of this that would challenge me? And I'll ask you some questions as well because as we look, I want us to see and to appreciate, you know, and ask yourself the question then, what are the lengths that I will go to to get what I have to get from God. And it's in, it is interesting, I'm so excited. It is interesting that Zacchaeus heard about this Jesus. And I'm thankful that we live in a society where just about everybody has heard about this Jesus. But sometimes we leave it right there. So many of us have grown up in church. So many of us have heard. You may have had Christian parents. You may have had parents who, you know, they knew somebody else who grew up in church and so have an idea. So we've all heard about Jesus. I'll make that assumption. But something about what Zacchaeus heard piqued his interest. We are told that he wanted to see who he was. It wasn't anything about, well, maybe he can heal me. Maybe he can. It wasn't like that. Zacchaeus was curious. It takes me all the way back to Moses when he saw the bush burning. And he said, I must go to see what that's about. There is something about the name Jesus that if we are even halfway mindful, it can draw us. It can intrigue us. But sometimes we tend to just leave it like that. There is something about this Jesus. You hear all the miracles. You hear all the signs. You hear all the wonders. And it sounds good. But sometimes we allow our problems. Sometimes we allow our limitations to just prevent us from pressing forward, finding out more, getting to know more about this Jesus. Sometimes it seems hard. And I mean, think about it. Here is Jesus in this scenario, walking with a whole crowd of people around him. How easy is it to start to think, maybe he won't have time with me. Sometimes we pray and we don't get answers right away and we think, well, God busy, he don't have time with you. Maybe my prayer is too insignificant. Maybe he, you know, people have bigger needs than I do. The beautiful thing about this God that we serve 
is that we are reminded that he knows our very need even before we ask. So that we don't even necessarily have to ask. But this God that we serve likes it when we come to him. We come to him in faith. He said in Hebrews eleven six 6, that without faith, it is impossible to please him. And then he says, but he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So that there is something to be said in choosing to pursue this God. And so Zacchaeus' interest was piqued to the extent that, okay, I want to see who is this Jesus. I've been hearing so much about this Jesus that he does great things. And we are told then that he was little of stature. And I would want to add to that, not only was he little of stature, but the nature of his job had him as an object of ridicule. People didn't like him. You know, in our society, some people may say, well, lawyers, insurance people, bankers. You know, I know somebody who says there's a special place in hell for bankers and insurance people. I'm not, it's not me, I'm just saying. But there are certain professions that we trust less than others. So the doctor tells you X, Y, and Z, and you're going with it. A lawyer or an insurance person tells you something and you think, well, okay, they ought to get my money. Zacchaeus was in that second category by the nature of his job. And you see, he references it in verse 8, where he says, Behold, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So that gives you some insight into the fact that he may not have been regarded in the best light to the public. I mean, normal human beings, yes, we press in to see Jesus Christ, and this little shorty comes in the midst. You know, we may be compassionate enough to allow them to squeeze in and get a better view. But Zacchaeus knew this wasn't his portion. And so what did he do? He decided, listen, I still have to see. And it raises the question then, what lengths will you go to in pursuing this God that you serve? This God that you want to know. This God that you want to get to know better. This God that you want to receive all that he has for you. What lengths are you prepared to go to achieve it? And so Zacchaeus made the effort and he climbed all the way up into the tree. As insignificant as he was because of his height physically and because of his, his job, as it were, who he was in society. And you know, thinking the fact that he was a tax collector, he would have been considered rich because he had material wealth. But in the eyes of society, he was still insignificant. If they could have gotten rid of him, they would have. He was almost like a necessary evil that took advantage. So he wasn't seen in the best light. So his need, maybe for a savior, maybe if he was sick, maybe whatever his need was, he couldn't necessarily depend on the man next door or whoever was around him because of who he was physically and because of who he was in terms of his economics, in terms of his standard of living, his way of living. And as such, he couldn't necessarily depend on anybody else. He couldn't necessarily depend on the average person to look out for him. And maybe in the midst of the choices that we make, sometimes we alienate people, even without trying. Sometimes we rub people the wrong way, just by being ourselves. And as such, we have to look and we have to be wise in the midst of life. Just because to those persons, our needs don't matter. To those persons, we are insignificant. They would rather, they, whether you're dead or you're alive, they, it doesn't matter to them. It's not going to change their day. But I'm saying to you, to Jesus, you are important. And so Zacchaeus made the effort and he climbed up into the tree and Jesus noticed it. Because God doesn't see as man sees. 
we are reminded that man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. How do I know that in this particular account? Let's read again in verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And then we go all the way down to chapter verse 9, where after Zacchaeus said, if anybody, if he takes anything by false accusation, he will restore it. Jesus said in verse 9, this day is salvation come to this house. And this is the, this is the part. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham. We understand that Abraham to be our father, Abraham to be the father of faith, where those that believe God are the ones that are saved. So regardless of his lineage, because he believed in Jesus, he was able to access salvation. Because of his choice to pursue Jesus, he was able to access salvation. And I'm saying to somebody today, even though to those around you, you may seem insignificant, to God, you are not. God has placed you here for purpose. What restricts you then from pursuing God? A lot of times it is very easy. I mean, there was enough reason here for Zacchaeus not to pursue. I mean, think about it. Somebody you know to be cheating you on your taxes, to be cheating you on this and robbing you out of money as it were. And here you are in this crowd pursuing. And this, this little fella, here's your opportunity to get some kind of revenge. Hit him a little tap on your head and tell him, well, uh -uh, go back there. But Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus chose to press regardless. It's like saying, regardless of what happens to me, I want to see this Jesus. He didn't say, you know, maybe I'll get saved. We didn't know what need he had beyond seeing Jesus. But here is Jesus willing to meet him at the point that he pursued him at. Willing to look up to the tree when everyone and everything else is going on around him. Looking for that one little one. That one who seems unlikely. That one who seems significant, insignificant. Sorry, That one who seems like if he were not here, if he were dead, this world would have been a better place. Sadly, we operate in a society where a lot of persons feel that way. A lot of persons receive that kind of feedback from those that mean something to them, whether they be parents, whether they be loved ones, husbands, wives, children, get that kind of feedback. I've been saying for a while now that we, we need to kind of look at the mental state that has enveloped our world coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic. Because some people have not learned how to cope. And as such, the repercussions are, you know, frightening at times. But it does not mean that they don't mean something to Almighty God. And we, as the people of God, we have a responsibility to look out for those people, just as Jesus would have done had he been here physically present. We are reminded in verse 10 that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And now as his representatives on earth, we are tasked with that responsibility to see beyond the behavior, to see beyond the choices, and to see the need that only Jesus can supply. So I'm challenging you today, yes, to the world you may seem insignificant, but to God, you mean something. To God, you mean enough that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And I love to remind myself, I love to remind others, that if it were just you that Jesus was coming for, 
he still would come. You mean that much to Jesus Christ. Even at your worst, Jesus Christ loves you. But he loves you enough not to leave you in that state. Because God already knows what he has placed inside of you even before he allowed you to be born on planet Earth. He knows the giftings that he has placed inside of you. He knows the talents. He knows that you can reach people for his kingdom, whether because of the experiences that you've gone through, whether because of the talents that he has placed within you. They are all working together for purpose. Sometimes life beats you down to the point where you think, well, what's the point that I'm here? I'm not doing anything. I'm not any worth to anybody. Nobody cares about me. People would be better off if I'm not here. But even now in the name of Jesus, I bind every petition of suicide over the lives of the people under the sound of my voice, over your families. I bind the spirit of suicide. And I declare it will not take place in your life. I declare it will not take place in your family because you mean something to God. He loved you enough to send his son to die for you. So do not sell yourself cheap. Do not sell yourself short. Yes, we live in a hurting world, but I'm telling you today that Jesus Christ can meet you at the point of your need and take you to a future that you've re refused to imagine for yourself because of what you see taking place around you. But know and understand, just as God said to Jeremiah, for I know the plans that I have for you. God sees you right where you are, in the midst of your mistakes, in the midst of your challenges, in the midst of your testings, in the midst of your trials, God sees you. And I'm saying there is still nothing that is too hard for God to do, for God to do on your behalf. Are you willing to trust God today? Are you willing to pursue God? Are you willing to allow yourself to see yourself through God's eyes? He said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. God already knew you. He created you for purpose. And I'm saying to you today, you will not leave this earth without fulfilling the purpose of God. It is not going to be a nice thing if you stand before God knowing that there was so much that you were supposed to do. There was so much that you wanted to do and you chose instead to take the cheap way out. I mean, we are reminded that there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of destruction. I'm saying to you today, do not settle because others don't recognize your value. You are valuable to God. Don't take an attitude that you have to prove anything to anybody either. Because once you walk with God, he will be the one to elevate you. He will be the one to carry you through that expected end. He will be the one to show himself strong on your behalf. So I'm asking again, are you willing to trust him with your life? Are you willing to trust him with your dreams? Are you willing to trust him with your disappointments? Are you willing to trust him with your hurts? Knowing that God loves you in spite of, in the face of, because of, God loves you. Not only are you made in his image, but you are called to a specific purpose on this earth. And because you have been called to that specific purpose, God has already placed inside of you every single thing that you will need in order to accomplish it. Do not sell yourself short. 
I'm, 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 I'm sensing a whole lot of hurt under the sound of my voice. And so many persons do not necessarily know where to turn to. But I'm challenging you today to pursue God. Pursue God. Don't be afraid to tell him. That's one of the things I love about God, where you can tell him exactly how you feel. Sometimes we feel we have to make all kinds of fancy prayers. But you can tell God exactly how you feel because he already knows. God is not afraid or, or, or overwhelmed by your challenges. And he is more than able, more than willing to carry you through, to work on your behalf, more than able to handle anything that tries to come against you. So do not allow yourself to be restricted. Do not be afraid to call upon God. Do not be afraid to hold on to God. If you're holding on to nothing else, hold on to God and watch him work on your behalf. Father, we thank you. We thank you today, God, because you care. Because you see, there is nothing that is hid from you, O oh God. And even as we come today, I pray by your spirit that you would minister to each and every person under the sound of my voice. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have free course, free rule and free reign in every life, that they would know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are there with them, that you've promised never to leave, you've promised never to forsake, and God, you love them even as they are. But you have a great and perfect plan for their lives. So God, even now I commit your people into your hands afresh. Cover them with your precious blood and surround them with those that will strengthen and encourage them to walk in their purpose, mighty God. Let only your name be glorified and let every plot, plan, purpose and petition of the enemy against your people be defeated even now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you even now for this time, and I thank you for what you will do in their lives. Let only your will be done, in Jesus' name, amen. It's not always easy, but trust God, he is more than worth it. Have a great day.